Hello and welcome to Teen Academy. In today's question, we are looking at a spring that oscillates. It's for the first question. We are asked to find the period of our function. Okay, so we know from our equations that you can find the period by using the following equation. T is equal to two pi over omega, where um, I believe omega, where omega is the uh, angular frequency. And we know from our equation of uh, h, h at t equal to a times cos 7.8 t plus b, that our angular frequency is given by the uh, constant in front of our time value. So then we can say our period is equal to 2 pi divided by 7.8. We can say after computing this value that our period is approximately 0 0.805 seconds. Moving on to our next question. We are given some additional information where the, the, the weight is released when its base is at a minimum height of one meter above the ground and it reaches a maximum height, max of 1.8. Uh, for question B, we're asked to find the value of A and find the value of B in our equation. Okay, so for question I, we're asked to find A and if we look at our equation, one key thing is to recognize that a is equal to the amplitude for our function. The, an easy way to find the amplitude would simply be by averaging the maximum height of our uh, function and the minimum height of our function. Finding the, the max minus the min and dividing it by two. And from the statements here, we know that our max is 1.8 meters and our min is one meter, which just gives us 0 0.8 over two or 0 0.4. Next question, question B, we're asked essentially to find the y-intercept of our equation, right? And so as with uh, all equations, we can evaluate for our y-intercept at x is equal to zero. So we evaluate our function h at, uh, at zero. So h at zero, from the given values here, we know that uh, when the weight's released at time zero, the minimum height, the height of our function is one. And so since we know that t is zero, um, evaluating cos at zero will just yield the value of one, positive one. So we can just say one is equal to a plus b, right? Because we still have our a value. And from our previous question, we know that a is 0 0.4 plus b. So then we can say b is just equal to one uh, minus 0 0.4 just a minor correction, given that um, our amplitude is uh, going downward, uh, it should be negative 0 0.4, so 0 0.4 times negative 1. Um, okay, so our amplitude is actually negative 0 0.4, so that when we evaluate for our function h at 0, for the y-intercept, we should instead have negative 0 0.4, so b is then equal to 1 plus 0 0.4, which is 1.4. And that is our answer for question ii. Now for question c, okay, so we want the number of times the max height is reached uh, in the first five seconds. So there are several different ways that we can do this. If we evaluate for h um, equal to 1.8 and then continue by finding the roots of the function and... Uh, kind of quantize our function so that cos um, satisfies this. Um, that is one of the methods that we can use. Um, another one of the methods that we could use is to look at our actual function here, where this is 10 seconds and kind of half it. 
So it would be approximately here, and just simply count the amount of times that we see the max height being reached, which is about six times, okay? The final method that we can use is by dividing the number of times desired, which is uh, five times, by our period, which would instead yield about 6.207 times. So that will be our answer, that uh, it is reached six times. Okay, and uh, now for our next question. Question D. First time the base reaches 1.5 meters, okay? So to start, we'll first recognize that at this first time of the base reaching 1.5 meters, that means that its height is, of course, 1.5 meters. And so if we equate this to our equation, a corresponding 1.4, we can evaluate uh, for our equation and solve. Subtract uh, 1.4 from both sides. Um, so we'd get uh, 0 0.1 is equal to negative 0 0.4 cos 7.8t. And we divide both sides by negative 0 0.4. Okay. And then we take the inverse cos, and then we divide both sides by 7.8. And when we compute this, we find that our answer comes out to be 0 0.23379 uh, seconds, which uh, I've rounded to be approximately 0 0.234 seconds. And now for the next question, we're asked to find the probability that the height of the base of the weight is greater than 1.5 meters at the time the picture is taken. Um, and we're also given additional information where a camera is set to take a picture of the weight at a random time during the first five seconds of its motion. So yeah, note that, uh, you know, if we look at the graphical representation, so what we can essentially do is say that the second time our uh, function or our weight will be at uh, 1.5 meters would be our period 0 0.8, 0 0.805 less minus um, the first time our uh, function reaches um, 1.5 meters. The second time that uh, our function will have the value of 1.5 meters will be 0.57175 seconds, and we can find the periodic frequency at which uh, our function reaches uh, 1.5 meters, which is uh, two times per cycle. But uh, in terms of the time it uh, will reach this is simply uh, found by taking the second time our uh, function reaches uh, 1.5 meters and subtracting the first and finding the difference of the two. And so we can say in each period the height is greater than 1.5 meters for every 0 0.338 seconds. Okay, so then we can find the probability probability that height is greater than 1.5 simply by taking the times at which our height should be greater than 1.5, multiplying by the number of uh, peaks or cycles that we have within this um, within the first five seconds and dividing by the total number of time. 0 0.406, and that would be the probability that the height is greater than 1.5 meters in the first five seconds. And that is all for this question.